Hey, welcome to my shop. Thanks for stopping by. I want to talk about older tools. I bought this scroll saw for $20 about 10 years ago. And it's really been a great workhorse. The thing is cast iron, has a really strong motor, and is really solidly built. It has one critical flaw. This coupler that connects the drive motor to the reciprocating part of the saw is made of plastic. Why did Delta make this part out of plastic? I have no idea. The rest of the saw is very sturdy. Well, I think that Delta could have used some other material to make that part. The fact that it lasted 30 years is pretty good, and I don't fault them for that. What I do fault them for is the fact that they don't offer a replacement part. You basically can't get any of the parts for this machine, either from Delta or for thir from third parties. In this video, I want to take you through the steps I used to save this tool using 3D printing. This really isn't meant to be a tutorial on SketchUp. There's lots of other videos on the internet for that. This is just to briefly show you what I did to design the part. Um, you can use the rectangle tool to select uh, the size of the part and you can enter the dimensions down here in the bottom right hand corner. You don't have to be exact with the drawing because you can always type in exactly what you intended. I'm using the tape measure tool to measure the uh, center of the two holes and then the arc tool to curve the end. You select the two ends and then select the end of the or the outside of the arc. And then the eraser tool to eliminate the corners. Now to set its thickness, I'm going to use uh, the push-pull tool. And you simply grab the face of the item and drag it up. And again, I'm just going to enter the value I want down in the bottom right rather than trying to drag it to the exact spot. Now I can grab the circle tool uh, and the center of my arc will be uh, selectable. You'll see it there when you go onto the arc. That's the center of my circle as well. So once we found the center point, we can drag out our circle to any random size and then enter the value we want down in the bottom right. And do the same thing at the other end. Now our part has a smaller diameter uh, circle down at the bottom, so basically the um, bearing can slip down and not slip out the other side. So I'm going to draw a second circle with the same center point. Now I'm going to again grab my push-pull tool and I can push the center part, which is empty, it's where the bearing goes, down to the thickness of our object, which will effectively make it a hole, and push the rim or the the uh, bearing stopper down to our measurement, which which is one millimeter. And that's our finished part. All we have to do now is select it all, and then go to edit and group. And you'll see here on the upper right hand corner it shows as one object. And then we're going to export it as a STL file, which is what the 3D printer requires. You can use that file either with an online service that can print it for you, or in my case I'm going to go to my local library where they have 3D printers available.
Here's our old part and our new 3D printed part. The old bearings are friction fit into the holes and we're ready to install it back on the machine. Here on Ontario Lakeside, we don't ask for PayPal. All we want is a thumbs up, a comment, and please share this with your friends and we'll see you next time.